What do you do when you feel like quitting? Less than a week ago, I announced my resignation from the department, and less than two days ago, my main source of income for my business was suspended, TikTok. Today, I'm going to explain what do you do when you feel like you are getting signals to quit, when in reality, it is a signal to keep going. Here we go. Welcome to the Vet Rise Podcast. I'm your host, Juan Perez. My goal is to make success after service accessible to every veteran in society. I believe in the power of leveraging your service, not as a label that defines you, but as a launching pad for your next chapter. What we have been doing has not been working, and it's on us to start changing the culture. Enjoy the episode, and thank you for your time. Today, We're going to be talking about what to do when you feel like quitting. This is a very, very fitting topic today. The reason being is because I just announced that I am quitting my job. And of course, life decided to smack me back. In the last 24 hours, we have been doing damage control. TikTok decided to shadow ban me, suspend me, whatever. My videos can still be posted, but the videos that typically got a couple of, I love the Deadpool face, a couple of thousand views at least are now getting between 100 and maybe 300 views. I can also not message or send any messages on TikTok. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating because this could not happen at a worse time. This could not happen at a worse time because this month we were going to use it to, to train the new VA. We have a new hire. Uh, everything was lining up properly, right? And of course, what happens when everything lines up properly, when things are going really well? Well, life is going to freaking life, right? And I want to say thank you all for the support. I've seen it in the chat. I've seen the messages. We have just been on basically just repair mode for all intents and purposes. And it's it's been a lot, right? So Sam has been working endlessly. We have a couple of things going on. We, we're starting to launch a website, a mailing list, all the good stuff. And I'm just really grateful. I'm really grateful that I have the opportunity to connect with all of you. Because honestly, as many of you know, like most of you found me through TikTok. And as many of you know, I've been going through some really big changes lately. And I wanted to take this time to share more about that with you. Now, not just the events themselves. That's not the necessarily the lesson here. But more significantly, significantly, the lessons that have come with those events the lessons that I'm learning along the way on this journey that like I'm literally on right now. I believe that sharing and being vulnerable and, and giving my experiences, I think it helps everyone, including myself. And I think we can all find strength and truly insight from seeing what other people are going through. Cause we're not on this alone. There are people here today who are going through similar stuff in a different way, not social media necessarily, but maybe you're going through something in your life where you're like, I'm getting all these signs that, I'm doing the wrong thing. When in reality, they are signs that you are on the right path. When you start to get hate, when people start to talk, when things do not go your way, that is life telling you that it doesn't like what you're doing. And life isn't supposed to be comfortable. It's not supposed to be easy. It's not supposed to be made for you. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. Because if we want an easy life, if we want to make it easy, we can do that. We can have an easy life momentarily until shit goes sideways on us. Now, you might have seen my recent posts about resigning from my position as a cop, right? Now, that was one of the biggest decisions that I've been building up to and is honestly a life-altering decision. I could easily stay in my job for another 10, 20 years, right? Make a paycheck, do whatever I can, and collect the pension. But that's not what I wanted. And it wasn't easy to walk away from that stable career, from a role that like, has been such a big part of my life, my identity, that I knew that I needed to change. But deep down, I knew that like it wasn't for me anymore. And I know that my true, la- my true passion, it lies here with you guys, with all of you, helping veterans and non-veterans like us like reclaim our health, change our mindset, build up our strength, and find new purpose. That's what this is all about. So, of course, what happens? The moment that I announced my resignation publicly, all of a sudden, of course, life decides to come at me. And... I noticed it on Saturday. I thought that there had to be an issue. I thought it had to be a mistake. I thought 
There has to be a, a reason why this is happening. It doesn't make sense. And I waited. Sunday rolled around, and of course, still shadow banned. So, again, I announced my resignation that I'm quitting. I'm losing my source of income. And now, what basically is my source of income, because that's where my leads come from. That's, when I, that's where I get my clients from, is completely falling apart on me. The main platform where I connect with thousands of veterans, where I share my daily motivation, my, my, my life, like, is just, it got suspended. It's been blocked. We, we have an idea when we're getting it back, but we don't have time. Right? That's what most of us don't have. We're trying to do something amazing. I've given a timeline of, of when I'm leaving. So therefore, like we are on like it, it's go time. That's it. And it, it freaking sucks. I won't lie to you. Like that moment when I realized what was happening, it was fucking devastating. I felt like everything was just falling apart around me. I'm like, what the f this is not happening. And I couldn't believe that it was happening right after I had announced that I was taking that bid leap. So here I was having just like announced that I'm leaving, pouring everything into this mission. And suddenly, like my main tool for reaching people was taken away. Now, what happened? Well, I felt a flood of emotions and I didn't deal with it. I ignored it. I suppressed it. I honestly was in denial. And until this moment, this, this morning, that's when I realized like shit. And I felt scared. I felt like frustration. A lot of thoughts raced through my mind. I was thinking, did I make a huge mistake? Is this a sign that I should just quit? How am I going to keep the academy growing without my main platform? Like, that's what I use. But then I took a deep breath and I remembered something crucial. Something that I've shared with all of you before. Every single challenge that we face is an opportunity. It's only overwhelm if we are not committed to facing it head on. This setback is not the end. It is just a test of my resolve to see if we can grow bigger and stronger without it. And I asked myself, what can I control in this situation? How can I turn this obstacle into an opportunity? And instead of dwelling on what I'd lost, I focused on what can I do moving forward? And we shifted. We shifted gears. Sam and I had an emergency meeting. He came over and he fucking had solutions. And I'm so thankful to have him in my corner because Sam immediately came up with solutions. We already launched a bunch of new stuff. And we're shifting gears, right? We're going to focus on other platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We started creating different types of content. We started creating a, a mailing list. We have a lot of stuff already happening that we made happen in less than one day. And that to me is a testament of when life slaps you in the face, like you can turn the other cheek. You can be soft. You can, you can tell yourself that I am not going to give into this. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's the wrong thing to do. I'm just saying sometimes you have to slap it back. And I'm not saying that violence is the answer. I'm saying that violence of action is the answer. You have to accelerate. You have to accelerate. You have to speed up. You have to understand that it is telling you, point blank, I'm challenging you. What are you going to do about it? So I said, okay, good. Watch this. So we continue to make changes. We accelerate the development of the website, the community hub, and the centralized place where we can actually connect and share resources from other places. And honestly, because of that, we're going to freaking keep growing. And I'm sharing this with you guys because I know that each of you faces your own challenges. Maybe you're dealing with a plateau in, in your fitness journey. Maybe it's your mindset. Maybe you're having personal issues that you're affecting your motivation. Or maybe it's work stress. Maybe that's impacting your mental health. Whatever you are going through, I want you to know that it's okay to feel frustrated, even discouraged momentarily. It's natural. It's going to happen. I felt it. But you have to remember, these moments, these moments are the moments that matter. This is when you have the opportunity to grow bigger than ever before. This is when you have the opportunity to face that boss that maybe you haven't faced before at the next level. Because new levels do what? They bring new devils. And it makes you stronger. And it helps you learn more about yourself. And to develop resilience. So, when you feel like quitting, take a step back and remind yourself of your why. Remind yourself why you're doing all of this. Like, why you started this journey in the first place. See, for me, for me, it's, it's about making a real difference. Not just in the life of veterans, but in the life of everyone that I can touch. And everyone that comes into contact with my like, videos, my content, my podcast. I want to help you reclaim your health your confidence, and your purpose. 
And that purpose to me is more powerful than any setback, any suspension, any ban. So I'm focusing on what I can control. In my situation, I could not control Titsot's actions. But I can control how I respond to it, what I do about it. And we chose to adapt. We're choosing to find new ways to connect. We're choosing to create a new plan. Setbacks often require you to pivot, to change courses, to adjust fires. Reassess your goals and your strategies and ask yourself, is there another way to achieve my objective? For me, it's going to be leveraging other platforms and building out different types of systems, building out a backup that we are going to pour more into. And we got to take action. When you are met with resistance, you have to take action. Do not get stuck in the overthinking. I almost did. This morning, this morning, as I was onboarding the new hire that we just had joined the program after we had someone quit last week, which was a whole nother feeling, right? I told myself, like, what can I do? So I took a pause and I jumped in my ice barrel and I allowed myself to feel my feelings. I actually sat in silence instead of listening to my motivational music. And I reminded myself that action is a powerful antidote to everything, to fear, to doubt, to whatever you are feeling. There's nothing wrong with asking for support. I know that I'm not alone. I know that a lot of you reached out to me. I know that you saw my story. That's the point. Like, I want you guys to see it. It's not just for the people that are non-followers or non-believers. It's for you guys too. Because I knew that you guys would reach out. I knew that you would get something from it. And I wanted you guys to be able to have an idea of what's happening behind the scenes. And I also want to share some other stuff about this community. So a lot of you have faced different challenges and you've grown in incredible resilience. A lot of you have been able to cross that plateau that you never thought you'd be able to cross. And when you have felt like quitting, when some of you have left the group chat, when some of you have sent me a message saying, I'm not ready. Okay. Are you? Or is there something else happening? And deep down inside, Nine times out of 10, there's something else happening. It might be the self-doubt. It might be the fact that you thought you'd be further along, but yet you're pretty freaking far along. It might be the fact that you think that if you have success, you won't know what to do with it. It might be the fact that when we want to quit, we can ask ourselves, like, am I going to? And therefore, I don't feel like I failed because if I quit, it was my choice. Because if I failed, then it wasn't really my choice and I, I couldn't do anything about it. But if I quit, I have some control over it. I can tell myself that it wasn't my fault. It was this or that or the program or the timing or my schedule or the training plan. If I quit, I have some control over it. Do you have control of it or have you completely given up your willpower? Hmm. When you make the decision to quit, you are losing all of the confidence all of the belief that you are building in yourself, all of the autonomy that you have gained, because now you are putting the ball in your court. It is your choice. If you fail because you have lost, because it is out of your control, but you gave it everything you had, there is no shame in that. There is lessons to be learned. So when you feel like quitting, ask yourself, Is there another way through this? Will I come out on the other side of this? Will this be the story that I get to tell one day? It's very easy to give yourself an out. I almost did that today. I almost found a point in my day when I started to bargain with myself, when I started to negotiate with myself. Well, I could still pull my papers and if I wait till January... I can sell back my vacation days and then I get a whole nother three paychecks and technically it's only one more month. And I fucking stopped. I'm like, what am I doing? I am talking myself out of taking the biggest leap of faith in my life. And I am not one to talk myself out of taking a leap of faith. Why? Because they have always paid off for me. Why? Because I have gone all in. Why? Because I am delusionally optimistic. Why? Because if you believe in yourself enough to do the things that you have to do, nothing can stop you. But if you start talking yourself out of stuff, if you start telling yourself like, well, if I quit, it's in my control. 
if you start talking to yourself and explaining to yourself why right now it's just it's not up to you and it's just not the right time and you have to slow it down a little bit, you are throttling your potential. The potential that you have inside of you, the potential that we all have inside of us to be more, to do more. The moment that you start to negotiate with yourself, the moment that you start to give yourself an out, that is when you start to really lose self-confidence. It's not when you fail. It's not when you try and go to the gym and you can't make it to the gym because you have a pop tire. But guess what? Tomorrow you still make it to the gym because you figured it out and you asked for help. You asked for support. Your partner showed up. When you try and figure out how to do the meal prep or how to put your calories into the app and it takes you an hour instead of 20 minutes, next time it gets easier. When you're trying to do your check-in and you're not very happy with how the check-in went, but you know what? You figure it out and you realize, damn, I actually did make some progress. When you decide to go out for that job, that certification, ask the girl out. Make yourself uncomfortable. If it doesn't work out, you didn't quit. It wasn't your fault. When you quit, when you want to, when you start thinking about it, when you start reasoning, when you start negotiating, it is all on you. The finger is pointed straight at you. So I told myself today, what am I doing? What am I doing? What kind of example am I being? Not just for my kids, not just for you guys, but for me. For me. See, my delusional optimism doesn't come from my two failed marriages. It doesn't come from the fact that when I left the military, I gained 40 pounds and I was drinking every day and smoking a pack of cigarettes and driving home and taking the streets instead of the highway because I knew that there was two McDonald's on the way home. My delusional optimism doesn't come from the fact that I've thought about ending everything. My delusional optimism does not come from the fact that I have felt like the biggest failure in the world. My delusional optimism comes from the fact that I didn't quit. That I made it through every single one of those things. That's where it comes from. That's where it comes from. So when life comes at you and it's giving you an out and you're negotiating with, well, if I do this or if I wait till later or if if I just say that it's not the right time yet, you are losing out on so much more than you know. You will gain experience. You will gain freaking resilience. You will gain an epic freaking story because you will slay the dragon that is that much larger than you but you will gain delusional optimism. When life happens and things are not working out your way and your TikTok gets suspended or your wife asks you for a divorce or your boss tells you that things are just not working out for you or you can't seem to get the right job that you feel like you need or want or you're not hitting your goals, ask yourself, Is this going to be the thing that destroys me? The reason why I look back and I tell myself I wasn't able to do what I wanted to do because of X, Y, or Z and give away all your power? Or is this going to be the thing that freaking lights a fire under you to make sure that you come out on the other side of it? Be delusional. Let people talk. Do you know how many messages I received today from people saying, well... This is the reason why you can't quit. But you know what was even cooler? I received five times the amount of messages saying the exact opposite from people who have been hearing my messages. This shit's working. And it's not that I needed validation. It's just that it's really nice to know that I'm on the right track. And it's really nice to know that the things that we're doing here are working. And I hope that by osmosis, you guys are starting to feel the same way. I've had a few of you tell me that you hear my voice in your head. I want you to hear your own voice in your head. I want you to freaking be your own little motivator. I want you guys to be able to freaking talk yourselves into doing the thing that you don't want to do. I want you guys to truly have so much freaking self-belief that all that negativity that's around you and that idea of quitting when you feel like things are not working out your way, you silence them. 
a while back, I heard from Alex Ramosi. He said that success is not the best revenge. It is the only revenge. There is no other. Become so large at what you are doing that they shrink into irrelevance. And that stuck out to me. So when I feel like quitting, when people want to tell me the things that they want to tell me, it doesn't affect me. Whether it's positive or negative, I already know what I'm going to do. Because I will not allow something like this to be the thing that destroys me. I did not make it back from Afghanistan. I did not go through everything I went through. The multiple divorces, the feeling of suicide. To allow a social media platform to be the thing that freaking brings me down. And I had an out. I could have easily been like, well, you know what? We're thinking ahead. And right now, obviously, this happens. So therefore, we're going to have to wait and blah, blah, blah. But deep down inside, I'd know. I would know. And how do you live with that? You don't. It suffocates you. And you slowly start to lose yourself a little bit. And I will be damned if I lose myself. I've been there. And I'm not going back. And I'm not going back. I want to encourage all of you to remind yourselves that when you feel like quitting, when you feel like you are looking for an out or you feel like you can make up an excuse or you can come up with a reason of why you can't do your check-in this weekend or you can come up with a reason of like why your workouts are not where you want them to be, like ask yourself, are you doing this to yourself or do you need to do this for yourself? I want you to know that we are all here. I am here for you. Just, have you. just as you've supported me through all of the recent challenges, I'm committed to supporting each and every one of you. And I'm not going anywhere. And I know you're not. So this is me letting you guys know that this is not phasing me. This is giving me more freaking fuel for my fire. This will be the story that I tell one day. And I want you guys to come up with something that fuels your fire. Whatever you have been toying around in your head about quitting or not doing or finding a way out of. Or when that voice starts to come at you in the middle of your workouts. Or as you're waking up in the morning to hop in the cold shower. Or as you want to stay up late to freaking watch TV. You are quitting on yourself. So silence the voice with delusional optimism. And do it by freaking just taking action. Just do the thing. Do the thing. And that brings us to the end of another episode of the Vet Rise Podcast. If today's episode inspired you, made you think, or simply gave you hope, I have a small favor to ask. Share it with just one veteran or someone you think could benefit from my message. Your share could light a spark for them. You don't know who you might save. For more insights and to join our mission, follow my socials at JP, the veteran coach, and explore how we can rise together. Thank you for joining us, for being part of this journey, and for believing in the power of rising together. Until next time, keep pushing forward, keep rising, and never forget that we are stronger together. My name is Juan Perez, and thank you for your time.